because it wasn't geography to him, it wasn't lines on a map, it represented a set of ideas, a set of values, that in England things were, Britain things would be fair, that there was opportunity for everyone, that if you worked hard and put in and integrated, you could be successful. It's the values that bind us that are the most appealing thing about the union, and we've got to talk in that language, not just go on about the numbers. And the most important thing, though, is we have to win the next election. If we government has to build the hospitals, there is just not enough grip at the centre of government on delivering things, right? And it may sound boring, but ultimately, you know, government has to work properly. Its economies in the world, it will still be the fourth lowest rate, with only I think, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Indonesia, from memory, lower than us. So it's still a very internationally competitive rate. So you can stand up, and I can stand up, and know that we are competing with our other countries. The other thing is I've protected small businesses. 70% of companies will not see an increase in their corporation tax rate because we've created a small profits level, so they will stay exactly where they are. So it's only the largest companies, small companies, exempt. And the last thing I'd say is we need them investing in manufacturing, we need them investing in equipment, in, in things that enhance our productivity, we need them investing in R&D because ultimately a future economy is one that is creating new ideas. That's how we're going to drive growth in this century, and I want to cut the taxes on those things. So yes, this corporation tax rate will go up for the largest companies, but to a level that is still very competitive. But where we are not competitive is our tax regime for those things. And so for the businesses that are investing, that are driving our growth and productivity, they will see significant tax cuts this autumn, because that's how we're going to stimulate growth. And on all the other things that you talked about, I completely agree, innovation is how you drive growth these days. We need our of the parliamentary party, right? And ultimately, in our system, we can't have a functioning government if the prime minister can't staff the government because 55 people resigned from it and there weren't enough people to form a government under his leadership, right? Now, I made a very difficult decision to resign. We should just talk about that and we'll finish on this thing, right? It was not an easy thing for me. It was a personal decision. It was a decision I made with an enormous amount of sadness, but ultimately, enough was enough for me. The, the various issues on conduct and integrity got to a point where I could not defend them, and I had very different point of view on the economy to the PM. And simply, I wanted to be honest with the country about the challenges we face uh, and be reasonable about what was going to be required to fix them. I don't believe you can have your cake and eat it when it comes to economic policy at a serious time. So it would not have been right for me to have stayed. And I left. I did it privately. I didn't make a big fuss about it. I didn't come to Parliament the next day. I didn't give any interviews. It was a personal decision that I took with sadness because I was enormously proud of all the work that I did with the PM. And he deserved and, and I think Rwanda is the right policy, but we have to make it work. And it goes back to what I was saying before. It's all good and well that we announce things, but then you need to get to the hard graft of actually delivering them. And that policy is going to take some effort to make work, but I will make it work. If you do nothing else, there's a five-minute video on my website, or four minutes, about illegal migration and my 10-point plan to fix it. Right? I don't think there's anything racist about trying to do it, and I think we can do it compassionately and be both a tolerant country and one that controls its borders, but it does require a new approach, and that's what I've outlined on my website. Please go and have a look, and hopefully you'll like what you read. Uh, and you'll like, and we'll end on this note, we're looking forward now. Right? Whoever wins, I will build a team that reflects the talents and traditions of our full parliamentary party. I'm really proud that I've got more support than any other candidate and more coming in every day. Uh, for me, and it's been drawn across the parliamentary party, from north, from south, from new intakes to senior cabinet ministers, to Brexiters, to Remainers, for people in Wales, to Scotland, all our parliamentary party are drawn on their support, I will draw on their talents to form a government, to bring us back together, because the most important task we have is to go and defeat Keir Starmer in less than two years' time. And if you just think of nothing else, you have to think, who is the best placed person to beat Keir Starmer? And I'm convinced and I'm confident, all the evidence says, I'm the person who can work with you to deliver that election victory for us. So please give me your support. It would be a great privilege to have it. Thank you.